In 2002, the University of Cincinnati in the Cincinnati neighborhood of Clifton Heights joined to create the Clifton Heights UC Joint Urban Renewal Plan to transform the Central Business District. Clifton was considered one of the original suburbs of Cincinnati. Around the 1870s, the city expanded a great deal due to the introduction of the streetcar, thus increasing accessibility around the city. The University of Cincinnati was city-owned up until 1977. Once the university became a part of the state of Ohio, enrollment and school status grew exponentially. This caused the real estate market to skyrocket with a lack of housing available to students. At the same time, with students being the majority of the community and many of the students commuting to the school campus, mixed-use buildings were raised in favor of auto-accessible single-story restaurants and surface parking. While this change in development around the campus was occurring, the University of Cincinnati embarked on a $2 billion master plan, which beautified the city and caused the pot to stir to transform the surrounding area. To spur development along for the community in a way that benefited it, UC partnered with surrounding communities to fund developments. This resulted in community development corporations being created that same year. When 1998 arrived, the process began for an urban renewal plan to take on this neighborhood bordering the University of Cincinnati. UC Clifton Heights Steering Committee selected architects and planners to study the Central Business District. There's a lot of concern over the power a university can have over its community. This is highlighted in the University of Cincinnati's actions. The question comes to fruition, is this common for universities to use their influence in the eminent domain for development purposes? Are colleges imitating real estate developers? In August of 2018, Boise State University also tested this new technique. The university was granted approval of acquiring property consisting of a parking lot and two apartment complexes in order to build a new baseball stadium for a baseball team the university doesn't have. This was done through the use of eminent domain. This is not the only case. There are other cases such as Collin Community College in Texas or the College of Desert in Southern California. Universities all over the United States are utilizing eminent domain to expand or redevelop the land surrounding their campuses. The Clifton Heights UC Urban Renewal Plan was enacted in 2001. After analyzing the study of the district, an urban renewal plan between UC and Clifton Heights was created to help restore vigor and diversity to the neighborhood. The Clifton Heights Community Urban Redevelopment Corporation, also known as the CHCURC, was formed as the lead entity in the new urban renewal plan. The CHCURC was designed to engage in numerous initiatives to remake the Clifton Heights Central Business District in compliance with the new plan. As a result of the plan, eminent domain battles occurred with Clifton restaurants over the next few years. Restaurants fought the city from taking their property and forcing them to move. Soon, the community would be fighting to keep the historic church of Old St. George from being raised, while at the same time preventing bad developmental deals also going through. Multiple times, these mixed-use developments ended up getting scrapped or pushed back due to the nature of their developments. In 2013, a big step in implementing the vision of the Community Urban Renewal Plan, U Square at the Loop, was introduced and serious ground would start moving over the next few years. This became the new mixed-use development that took the place of the failed development. This project was seen as a huge milestone in the implementation of the Urban Renewal Plan. After the loop had finished, multiple projects started to flow through. A $75 million hotel apartment project came to the neighborhood in 2016. In 2016, the almost raised church of Old St. George Church was finally renovated and restored. CHC, URC, and Crossroads, a Cincinnati-based church, restored and reopened the old church and it continues to serve the neighborhood.
However, concern soon set in over the changes being made to the area. As nicer and nicer developments and changes are coming through, worry sets in over possible gentrification soon following for the non-collegiate community members in this neighborhood. The resolve of the community would soon get tested the following year. A big $108 million student housing development tests how flexible the plan is when it comes to new developments. Development is facing a lot of pushback from the community and some city council members, and even from the CHC URC, due to how lenient the project is to the developer and how beneficial it is to the rest of the community. As a result of some concern over projects such as the student housing project, new zoning laws were enacted, giving power back to the residents of the community in 2018. These laws would give community residents more control in what developments come to their neighborhood through overlay districts. But with the urban renewal plan continuing to invite further investment, a massive $400 million mixed-use development came to the community in 2019. This development could house up to 2,500 people with a focus on community and student-based housing. It could also provide additional parking and commercial opportunities on the ground floor of this 275-foot tall building. However, as was voiced a few years back, the rent costs in the area have skyrocketed as the years have gone on. Since 2011, rent for an apartment that used to cost $600 to $700 a month has risen to more than $1,000 and seems to be on its way to $1,100. After observing many cases of other universities and watching how the University of Cincinnati has utilized eminent domain for personal gain, there is cause for concern. If powerful universities are given the option to take whatever land they want with little resistance or accountability to their actions, a dangerous path could be set. There must be stricter rules to ensure gentrification, displacement, and more systematic problems don't ensue from the university's actions. Generous compensation for acquiring land should be given out to both the landowners and the occupants of the building if there are tenants renting. There also needs to be stricter rules and scrutiny into when eminent domain shall be used to prevent negative problems from occurring. This would help protect residents and the community from further incidents in which they become taken advantage of.